Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Now in this short video, I want to talk to you about risk reward dead cubes. Now there will be some maths in this video, but I'm going to try to keep it as straightforward and simple as possible. Feel free to pause the video or even rewatch it afterwards um, to get a better understanding. Now I'm going to show you this position from the recent UBC which actually decided the match. Now white is on roll, it's a match to seven. White is currently on four points, so three away from winning the match and green is on zero, seven points away. And white owns the two cube and is deciding whether to re-cube or not. Now what would you choose to do here? Now, it is a no redouble and a clear take, and it's almost a blunder here to redouble as white. Now, the question to ask yourself is why would you not redouble here as white? Because green would need to roll a double on the dice, um, six or 36 rolls, to win this match because white is on roll. And also, as you can see on the panel on the left, white is an 86% favorite here. Um, turning the cube would also win the match. So why is it so wrong um, to turn the cube here to offer the redouble? Now, in order to answer that question, we need to look at the match equity table developed by Rockwell and Kazaros. Now, I'm aware that you may be watching this video on a small screen. Don't worry, I will put a link to a match equity table in the video description. You can also view this on XG and simply type match equity table into Google and you'll be able to view that online also. Now, what is the match equity table? Well, this simply tells you your winning percentage, your match winning chances at different scores. So you can use the two axes there to determine what your percentage is. So for example, if you were seven away and your opponent was two away, then your winning chances as the trailer at that score would be 15.77%. And you can do this for any score, including Crawford and post Crawford. Now, this is very useful. And why is it useful? Well, it helps us make correct cube decisions over the board. So let's go back to that position. And there you can see on the top corner, I've put a snip just focusing on seven point matches. And I would advise you to certainly try to remember this or even just five point um, winning percentages because a lot of matches, no matter whether they are 11, 13 points or whatever, they do tend to reduce to five point matches um, over the course of the match where these percentages really will come in helpful. Let's look at the eventualities of what might happen here. So of course, white can choose not to redouble and win on the two cube um, which he currently owns and then it would be one away Crawford seven away and white would have 91% match winning chances. Um, white could redouble to four and win the match um, outright but of course white could also lose. Um, white could lose on the two cube and then it would be three away five away which would be 65% or white could redouble and then lose the match because of course if white were to redouble to four here then green of course would send it back to eight um, because um, if white didn't end uh, the match by rolling a double then green would lose a match on a four cube anyway so it's much better for green to flip the cube to eight and then of course has a chance of winning the match himself. So it's much more beneficial um, to whip um, the cube back to a higher value. Now, in order to understand um, White's recube decision here, we need to look at the double point and do a little bit of math. So I'm just gonna talk you through this now um, to show you how it works. Now, if White did not redouble and won, then it would be one away Crawford, seven away, which would be 91% winning chances. 
White could redouble and win, and win the match, 100%. So the difference between those two would be 9%. So that would be the gain for White. Now, White could choose to not redouble and lose, taking it to three away, five away, which would be 65%, or could redouble and lose, and Green would win the match on the eight cube, and that would result in a risk of 65%. Now, we can, from those numbers, percentages, from the gain and risk, we can work out the DP, the double point or the push point, which it's sometimes called. And to work out that, it's risk over risk plus gain. So there we can see the risk is 65 risk and gain 65 plus 9 which is 74 so 65 over 74 leads to 88 percent now if you look at the panel on the right we can see that white's winning chances are currently below the doubling point white only currently has 86 percent so white is not yet in the doubling window now, because white's winning chances are below the doubling point, it's a no redouble. Now, it's worth mentioning that this is a dead cube position because once a cube has been turned, then the match is effectively over in this game. Now, if we were to look instead at another position, at a live cube, such as a racing cube, for instance, that would not decide the match, then we have to change our approach to the doubling point. Now, let me try to explain this clearly for you. Now, in a dead cube scenario, such as the position you are seeing, White can double the second his winning chances get to the doubling point at 88%. But in a live cube scenario, it's better to, for White to wait until he's above the doubling point until he's closer to the take point of our opponent about two thirds into the doubling window so there we see the difference between the dead cube where we can double at 88 percent which white is currently not on which means this is a no redouble to a live cube scenario where white would have to wait until his winning percentage is higher than 88 percent now, another aside I want to add on this is sometimes you may see that it is correct to double when your winning percentage is actually below the doubling point that um, is shown on the cube information on XG. And wonder why that's the case. Well, in those situations when it can be correct to double beneath the doubling point, that's because number one the doubling point is theoretical but also gammons may be involved and also market losing sequences which are factored in this position we're looking at is a gammonless position and in gammonless positions we have to wait until we get to the doubling point to make the double correct and simply here we are not at the doubling point um, so it's wrong um, to redouble OK, now this is white recube decision. Now let's look at green's take decision on the redouble. Now green can pass and the score will be seven away, one away. And green would then have nine percent winning chances. Green could take, turn the cube to eight and win, win the match, but also take and lose. And white would win the match. So there we had a risk of nine percent but a gain of 91%, so that's pretty good odds. And there we can work out the take point by risk over risk plus gain, a 9%. So if Green passed, he would only have 9% winning chances anyway. So it's simply better here for Green to take. And to simplify that, we can see that here, Green's winning chances are at 14% which is better than the winning chances of 9% green would have by passing. So 14% is better than 9%, so it's simply better to play the match out here 
than at the Crawford uh, winning chances. And that's why the match equity table is useful for finding those percentages. Now, another thing I want to mention here is about cube efficiency and overage. Now, this should help guide you in the right direction and set off a little bell um, in your head when playing. Now, white is three away from winning the match. So turning the cube to four is inefficient because their white is getting one extra point than he actually needs. And of course, by turning the cube to four, green is gonna send you back to eight, and then white will have five extra points um, than he actually needs to win the match. So there will be an overage of five points, whereas green will only have an overage of one point on the eight cube, because he's currently seven away. So when you have that excess amount of points, points you do not need, points that take you over um, the points you need to win the match, then usually um, it's a bad decision. So always consider overage and how many points you need to efficiently win the match before shipping the cube. Now, I just want us to look at a variation on that first position where we look at the same position, but in an 11 point match. And the scores are the same. So white is on four and green is on zero. So that is seven away, 11 away. And white owns the cube on two. So what would you choose to do here as white? Would you redouble? And would you as green take or pass? So what would be your thinking? Now here it is a very big redouble and also a very big pass, a monster blunder to take this cube. And again, we can apply the maths to help us understand the reasoning behind this cube action. Now, here on the left, we have white deciding to redouble, the double point. Now, white could not redouble and win, taking the score to five away, 11 away with 80% winning chances. Or white could redouble and win, making the score three away, 11 away at 89%. So there we have a gain of 9%. Alternatively, white cannot redouble and lose, taking the score to seven away, nine away at 61% or redouble and lose, taking the match score to seven away, seven away, 50% winning chances. And there there's a risk of 11%. The doubling point is risk, 11%, over risk plus gain, which is 20%, which gives us 55% doubling point. And we can see that we are above that as white, which makes it a clear redouble. Now, before we move on to right hand information, we may ask ourselves, well, if the gain is 9% and the risk is 11%, then why are we redoubling exactly when the risk is higher than the gain? But here, the risk and gain can be taken with a little bit of a pinch of salt because a 9% gain is still a 9% gain. And here we are a massive favorite as white at 86%. So we are an 86% favorite to win the game. So our 9% is pretty much already banked, regardless of it being slightly lower than the risk. Now on the right hand side, where the green decides to take the take point, we can again apply the math. So green passes and it's 11 away, five away with 20% winning chances. Take and win, seven away, seven away. Take and lose, three away, 11 away, 11%. And then we can work out the gain and risk. So the gain is take and win minus pass. So if take and win is 50% and the pass is 20%, which equals 30% for our gain as green. And the risk is pass minus take and lose. So pass is 20% and take and lose is 11% equaling 9%. And now our take point is the risk 
which is 9, over the risk and gain, 30 plus 9, 39. 9 over 39 is 23%. And green only has 14% winning chances here, which is 9% lower than he needs to take. So here it is a big pass um, in this scenario. So in the first uh, position in a seven point match, we could see that there was a no redouble um, and a take. And here in an 11 point match, after doing the maths, we can see it's a redouble and a pass. Um, so these are both dead cube situations. The first one would decide the match, but here, this is a dead cube because green can never redouble here. Even if white doesn't win immediately by rolling a double, then green is still going to need a double to win and would only have 16%, which is still below what he needs um, to offer the redouble because he's still a very big underdog. So the cube is dead, green can never redouble, um, and therefore it is a pass here so there we are they are two dead cuba situations one in a seven point match one in 11 point match with some risk reward calculations using the match equity table um, these positions do come up they came up recently in the ubc like i said which decided the match and they do come up over the board also in tournaments so it's definitely worth knowing about and playing around with um, so use XG, look at the cube information and you will find it all there. Live cube take points, dead cube take points and so on. Um, I hope you found this useful and I hope it was clear. Um, see you next Wednesday for another video. All the best. Take care.